No, yeah, I, I, I understand. You're right. I mean, I understand. I, I never wanted it to be a happy ending. No, I, I don't. Yeah, but listen, that was the point of it. I, I wrote into the story so that the climax is a choice. I, I just wanted to know. Listen, I think that's all I'll be hearing for today. Um, I'm exhausted. I, I just want some sleep. Yeah, I, I'll call you tomorrow, Karen. Good night. Nothing kills a man faster than his own head. I've come to learn this night after night as I lie here and think. My mind is an inescapable hole and with every passing moment I dig myself deeper. I hate this. My home. My life. How could I ever think I was a good writer? I'm just a lonely head case with a pen. Sorry, I lost that track of time. Um, is it busy today? Yeah, it's busier than usual. The manager knows you're a regular here, so he says you could stay if you order. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I've been here long enough. Okay, thank you for understanding, sir. Um, how long have you been coming to this place now? About a year, why? Well, same seat every time for a table for two, and I never see you with anyone. Well, are you watching me? No, well, there's a girl inside who's just like you. She's come by every day at the same time, and I have to tell her what my manager told um, me to tell you. What are you trying to say? Nothing. I just some, I just want something to happen. It's a pretty boring job, and no one there's my friend. You two just always come here and seem... Quiet? Lonely. Look, when she walks out, maybe you can talk to her? Listen, I think you should leave me alone now. You got it, man. She sits inside of there um, in the room past the cafe. It's a closed bar. Why did she tell me about this girl? She's just alone like me. Why would a cafe have a bar in the back?
No idea. A woman discovers love with a man she meets in a cafe. However, she has a troubled past, full of trauma. Will the man help her? Must explore more. We need to talk. But you're walking. Mom, you told me you... I know what I told you. We need to talk inside. So, what is it that you have to tell me? You said you fell and broke something. You said you called 911. That's what I wanted you to believe, yes. I thought you were hurt, I was worried. And you didn't think that it was urgent? You didn't think that I was in pain? So I think said such a- A what? I think you should keep quiet until I finish saying my thoughts. I deserve that much, I'm your mother. This is the point, why am I here? This is the point, I called you, your choice of words, though they're few and far between. I never talked to you. I'm afraid all I've become to you is a burden, a stranger. Tell me, why is it that your brother Joseph calls me every day and tells me how his days are going? It's not because I'm just a stranger to him. I am his mother, like I am yours. Yeah, but I'm not like him. And why do you think that is? You were never a good parent to me, and from the looks of it, you haven't changed much. I know breaking your leg is just what you would do. Enough. I am this deeply disappointed in you, son. I haven't talked to you in over three months. I haven't seen you since you moved out a year ago. And look, I'm still here in the same room you grew up with us in. That's what I think it is. No, it's not. It isn't an intervention. It isn't a plot to get you back in my life. Because God knows I've done enough of those things. And what do you want? I want the truth. Why you left me as soon as you did. Why you never paid me or your brother any mind while you read your books. Why you skipped school to write stories in your journal all day. Why you left us out of your world, your life. Every second I lived here, I thought of Dad. Ever since he passed, you knew I wasn't the same. But we mourned, all of us did. Me above all, when you stayed silent. You cried while I was looking. You never talked about him when I was in the same room. Well, I couldn't escape him from my thoughts or my dreams. I lived here with him for half my life, and I will stay here. But now I live here alone, all by myself, with only one of my boys calling me, and he lives in Seattle, for God's sake. I did more, and maybe not with you, but I missed him just as much, and maybe even more, because what's the son really without his father? Your father was still with you and me even after the cancer killed him. 
And that's just another problem with you, Sonny. You never wanted to know how he knew him. He was my husband, my everything. You won't open up to anyone either. That's the worst part. I know you have no one to talk to, no family to hear your problems, not even friends. Have you really been alone this whole time, doing nothing but writing for people you don't know or care for? That's a problem with you. You really do believe that dad is still with us. Well, let me break the truth to you. He's gone without a trace behind. He's been dead long enough for you and I to forget about him. The way I see it is you either die for gone or die remembered. No more I refuse to talk to you or Joey, because you're both holding me back, making me doubt my life choices. I know you're disappointed, but I am what I am, Mom. I'm going to leave a trace behind. I'm going to be remembered. I learned more from Dad dying of cancer than I'll ever learn from you. Do you think your father was forgotten? Do you think because he didn't do anything someone will remember him for in a hundred years? That he's gone without a trace? Your father isn't remembered for being weak. He was good to everyone he knew. Most of all, the three of us. Look at you, my son. Even now, I love you. But if you continue to push everyone away like this, and keep carrying a burden that should have passed long ago. I'm afraid you'll die alone. I hope this is the last time you're going to call me because I know when I see you the next time, you won't have a book in life. You'll be dying. Excuse me, this um, I kind of noticed that we have the same routine for visiting this place at the same time. Sure. Um, sure? Mm -hmm, you can sit with me. Oh. I mean, I noticed you were staring at me yesterday. It was kind of hard not to notice, especially with the way you were looking at me. I thought it was fine until this man told me he tried to grab me. No, no, I, I didn't try to grab him. I, I'm sorry for staring. It's just, I noticed that you were sitting alone like me, you know? I mean, what was all that writing about in your journal? Well, I'm a writer, a published author. 
I write novels on things I see, but some things inspire me, you know? So I'm your inspiration then? Maybe. I don't know yet. Maybe it'd help if I kept talking to you. So what's this novel about? I don't know. I haven't written it yet. Would I be uh, a side character or a main character? Protagonist, I guess. I mean, I should write you as some folk character, right? Would it be a romance? I don't know. I mean, I've always loved romances. Me too. I've written two before. My name is July. I'm Alan. <laughs> I mean, this is just, I'm pretty bored here usually. It's just a place I come to read and sit. Yeah, um, I, I come here to think. Would you maybe want to go on a walk with me? Yeah, sure. What are you writing? Um, give me a second. About your new book? Sorry, what? What are you writing? A new story. Um, you inspired me. Do something today? Alan. What's up? Do you want to do something today? Um. Yeah, sure. I was thinking maybe we could go to this restaurant down the street and. What? Never mind. Um. Okay.
Hey, Karen. I just dropped off the final draft at your desk. I'm outside the office. What? You didn't want to say hi? No, I had to be someplace. <sighs> Has it been edited? What's it about? Well, it's a romance novel. It's about this girl who's... You know what? Never mind. I'll find out on my own. I have a board meeting in 10 minutes, so... Sorry. Yeah, um, sure. I'll get back to you on this later. Also, Table for Two? That's a snobby title. Mm, maybe we should change it to something else, you know? Something that'll stick out to the readers more. Also, maybe- Do you want to know why I didn't call you back for a week, Karen? <laughs> you were sick, right? Didn't look at your notifications? No, I was fine. Then why? Why'd you lie to me? Because you suck as a person. You're curt, rude, and demanding. Professionally, you're just as good as your job as I am at writing, and, and that's your best quality. Whenever I have to talk to you, it's always because I have to hear you criticize my stories or to hear you explain why my paychecks aren't coming through. <laughs> and what's your point? Try to be a nicer person, or don't. I don't care. My real point is I don't see us as friends. I didn't want to stick around in your office because I hate seeing you in person. I give you better stories and than any other writer you guys publish and you treat me like shit. Truth is, I'm writing fast enough for you to be publishing a dozen bestsellers a year and you won't care. You're the leech and I'm the tower. That being said, whenever you call me and I don't answer right away, it's because I don't want to pick up, all right? For the record, if I were anyone else, you'd be cut off. But you know what? I can work with you, Alan. I never liked you either. You're a selfish egomaniac who thinks he's an artist. Can't get more pretentious than that. <laughs>